It's your day. Hey, out of the way. Get up, kid. Let's see what we have for light news. Jordan Peterson's got a new book coming out. These are scraps. Don't get it twisted. Jordan Peterson became a millionaire and became famous because he wrote a book called The 12 Rules for Being a Guy. And a lot of fucking losers latched on to this. I'll tell you this right now. If you've ever bought a self-help book, if you read self-help books, if you watch self-help if you are listening to another man for any sort of advice without picking up picking up on it organically throughout life, you're a cheater. You're a nerd. You will never be successful. There is no Cliff's Notes for life. There is no cheat code. And what Jordan Peterson did is he took advantage of a very stupid group of people. And he put out the 12 rules for success. And anyone that reads that book and lives by it, trust me, you ain't living by it. Um, I believe that uh, if you're truly trying to help people, you don't sell your help. That's always been a con, man. Uh, you know, from uh, the beginning days of infomercials. Well, I'm going to teach you how to get rich quick. And people bought into it. And guess what? They didn't get rich quick. Okay. Because people who are rich don't, they don't do that. They're just rich. And uh, Jordan Peterson is the new wave of that shitty con man infomercial. Sure. They can't call it get rich quick because that's been proven to be a scheme. So what they say is 12 rules for success. Anyone who is life coaching you. And that's like their main purpose. Oh, sure, I'm dropping uh, nuggets of life wisdom throughout the show. But that's not why I'm here. Okay? I'm here because of George Floyd. Jordan Peterson is, no matter how you want to cut it, no matter how much you were tricked, no matter how intellectual you think he is, him and his family are con men. I've studied them harder than you have. And I know that this is true. They don't know they're con men. That's what I've also learned. They do think they're doing good work. They do think they're good people, but at the end of the day, they are con people. They're bad people, and they're not even from America. I'm so sick of Canadians telling America what they should be doing. They don't know. They grew up on Bieber and Drake <laughs> on the radio. Jordan Peterson released a new book, and it's cutting room scraps of his old book. So his old book, okay, he I don't know how many pages it was, but let's pretend it was 2,000 pages. Well, when you write a book, you usually have more pages than ends up in the final book. So let's pretend Jordan Peterson sent 4,000 pages to his editor. And they said, okay, well, let's cut it down to this 2,000 pages. Very good. Okay, perfect. Made a ton of money. His publisher has been begging him to write a second book. I've seen Californication. I know how this works. Jordan Peterson has been out of business for the last few years. Weekend at Bernie's in a coma in Russia because of his pill addiction. Okay. He's a bad person and he falls into his gimme gimmies. Okay. He falls into desires that he preaches against. 12 rules for success. I don't know. The number one rule should be don't be in a coma in Russia for one year of your life. How about that? Is that part of the 12 rules or is that rule 13? Well, rule 13 is to be hospitalized in a Russian jail in a self-induced coma because you got addicted to pills. Is that one of the rules? Now, I know you might have sympathy and think, oh, poor him. Not poor him. This is a bad family. This is a family that loves greed. And I'll tell you this, I've watched these intellectuals and what the intellectuals, maybe they start out as good people, but they fall into the trap of greed, fame, and attention. Just like every other person on the internet and they all become bratty little fucking Daisy Keeches. Jordan Peterson and Daisy Keech are the same person. They want attention, money, fame, and likes. And that's what they've become. So maybe Jordan started out great, but he fell for um, the vanity, the desire, and the greed. And he was punished for it. So what he's done, because he's been out of commission for almost two years here, Brain dead, literally brain dead. And people don't really know about this. 
or uh, they think there's another story or they're believing, straight up believing. People know now. I feel like the yeah, Kayla a lot and Jordan of people, have kind of become yeah. a meme they on Twitter have, the last few months. But not to everybody. you still got a huge fan oh, base. Oh, of course. It's like Tana Mongo. You can't cancel people anymore. They just, once you have like a ton of fans, doesn't matter what you do, you'll keep 75% of those idiot fans because they're idiots in the first place for becoming so obsessed with such an asshole. So Jordan Peterson had those extra 2,000 pages from book number one. And the publisher goes, come on, let's make another book. You know, let's strike by the iron sound. He goes, well, what about all that cutting room floor shit that we scrapped from the perfect? Just throw it together, reorganize it, re-edit it, and we'll sell it in a second. But this is not going to be a good book. He's still deranged. And uh, it's a shame. Listen, you don't think I'd get behind a guy like this if he was legit? You don't think I want an idol in here? What do you think I'm doing here? I'd kill for somebody to look up to. This is all I want. He's not the guy and he's half dead. You want proof? I got it. Here's the tape. Big announcement. Jordan? Or should I say, what is it? Guac? This looks like AI guac footage. Watch this. Hi. I'd like to announce my new book, Beyond Order, 12 More Rules Beyond for me. Life, which I've been working on diligently for the past three years. No. Okay. Lie number one. You've been in a coma for almost two. You haven't even been able to walk. I got footage of you holding a side rail at a rehab center. I got footage of you trying to work a remote control car. You couldn't get it around the turns. You haven't been working on it diligently for three years. I've watched you and your daughter's every move for the last three years. (laughs) You've been in bed unable to speak this is old editors cutting room floor footage from your first book do you have any footage of you working on this book diligently or maybe they were working on it diligently meaning the whole family was trying to scrap together a second paycheck Wasn't there here something about how michaela said she was like editing his i am having yes a this is what happened i'm telling you this is what happened he wrote the great book big famous great book Got into the shitty drugs, became a fucking pill head, didn't do any work or any fucking shit ever. They took the cutting room floor stuff and they made a second book out of it. uh, Distributed and uh, probably uh, they concocted this with Michaela and Learning House Publications. Random house. Okay? You didn't work on it. I could see you. I wasn't born yesterday. I'm looking at your eyes. You got no confidence anymore. You could barely stand. You could barely breathe. Enough with the charade. By the way, this is shot in four by three. You have to go out and hire a specialty crew to get this kind of footage. Hi. I'd like to announce my new book, Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life, which I've been working on diligently for the past three years. As of today, the book is available for pre-order in the U.S. At least he's still got them graveyard teeth. They couldn't work on these in the year and a half coma. Maybe get in a Russian uh, dentist in there. Look at that shit. R.I.P. Died in 1702. R.I.P. Died in 1801. R.I.P. Died in 1502. Look at that authentic European graveyard. Post-COVID in the chat says, redefining the term ghostwriter. Ghostwriter, I love it. <laughs> the UK and oh, Canada. Yeah, the UK, please. I've linked to some major retailers, including international links for Doesn't Amazon. Doesn't even sound like In him. the video's description below. I've also included the link to the Beyond Order page on my website, yeah, jordanbpeterson.com, where links to book retailers in different countries will be posted as they become available. I know we got someone in the chat here. Mike David, you are on point. I'm a psychologist. This dude is a wannabe motivational speaker. Thank you. Very psychological way to put it. Beyond Order will also be published Beyond as an me. e-book and as an audio book, which I have nearly finished recording. All formats will be released on Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. Michaela's got the cue card down there while jerking him off and holding a cue card. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Come on, we need a few more bucks. We could get an Airbnb. He seems very like he's been through a lot. My family wants an Airbnb with a pool. So I will put out this book. 
I want to provide you with a sense of the book in addition to announcing its existence. What? So I thought I would read you a section from the overture, the introduction, which describes the book's contents in some it. detail. Yeah. That's about I'll it. Give you the sense. Guys, of the book. <laughs> always judge a man by his eyes. You know, eventually we're going to get to a point where we go, can you believe there was a time where we didn't judge people just by their eyes? The eye test. If you're not self aware enough to go, okay, that's the eyes of a liar. That's the eyes of a guy who's just saying what he needs to say to get that next paycheck. Uh, I don't know. You know, you got to trust yourself, trust your gut. Your gut's going to be right. Sorry, Dr. Peterson. You've gone boom. But look at this new, what I believe to be a marketing scheme. Uh -oh. cooked up. Article? <laughs> yep. All right, so look at this. I think there is a marketing scheme attached. Penguin. Oh, it is Random House. Yep. So I guess I said Learning House, then I said Random House. <laughs> Penguin, I guess Penguin and Random House merged. Yep. I haven't read a book since I was uh, about nine. And back then, there was no Penguin. Okay. Uh, Penguin Random House staff confront publisher about new Jordan Peterson book during a tense town hall. Staff cried. Is that you? Staff <laughs> cried and expressed dismay with the publishing giant's decision to publish Beyond Order. Okay, so what's going on? Jordan Peterson. And I want to explain uh, uh, to you what's going on. And I'm going to be able to prove this, too, because I am hiring a marketing and publicist company. This is, this is what idea. I'm going to do. Uh, over the next six months, I am going to hire a top marketing firm and a top publicist to work for me. And I'm not going to tell them what it's for. And I'm going to ask them to give me their best, uh, roll out their best plans for me and have a whole meeting. You know, I've been watching Entourage a lot. I want to walk into a meeting where they go around the table and everyone pitches their ideas. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what they're going to say, because this is what's happening. Marketing companies and publicists have new plans that they offer to all their clients. And they've been doing this for about two or three years now. They've always done stuff like this, but now it's uh, for everyone. If you hire a marketing company or a publicist, they go, would you be interested in one of our outrage plans? And you go, outrage plans, what's this? They go, well, it's a little risky, but we've, we've had great results. So basically what we'll do is we'll... Willed agency. We'll do something controversial that gets us free press. So here's an example of outrage marketing that everybody still falls for and still works. The Grammys this week didn't nominate The Weeknd for any Grammys, although he was he won a bunch of American Music Awards and he was supposed to win all he of these year. Grammys. He had a big year. The Weeknd. I'm blind in my life. I don't think that he had a big year, but in music, he was like the top guy. One of the top songs was Blinded by the Light, and he was snubbed at the Grammys. Over the last week, The Weeknd and all of his fans and a lot of America have been battling the Grammys, saying this is unfair, there's some scheme going on here, you're snubbing the Grammys. Meanwhile, the Grammys got press in every paper, every magazine, for free. So did The Weeknd. For free. Um, and so did The Weeknd. Now, The Weeknd isn't involved in this. The Grammys are. So what the Grammys did is they hired we a publicist and a marketing uh, person. And they said, would you like to do some outrage marketing that will bring you in? And they do this a lot for award shows and lists like, uh, you know who does this a lot? Um, uh, that rap magazine. What is it called where they do the uh, top? The XXL the freestyle The XXL thing? freestyle thing. What they do is they purposely pick rappers that shouldn't be in the top 10 list. Any top 10 list you see is purposely giving you the top 10. It's like what Barstool's doing. They're purposely giving you the top 10 things wrong so that every publication goes, can you believe what they wrote? And there's no one to really get mad at because sure, you could get mad at the Grammys, but there's no one person to blame. And you're not going to not watch the Grammys because they snubbed the weekend. You're actually probably going to watch because you want to see who they didn't snub and who they you think is better. You want to see who they think's better. Now, the Grammys doesn't care if you don't like them as people. They care about one thing. They care about one night of television and how many people tune in. So they're faced with one problem. 
And one problem only that they have once per year. We have one show. How do we get the most people to tune in? We have one night. We have one chance. How do we sell the most ads? They're going to do anything they can. This is how, what's that blonde girl's name? Dear fat people. Uh, Nicole Arbor. Nicole Arbor is the exact same way. She gets paid based on clicks. So when she says something outrageous and you all fall for it and argue and go watch her video, she's getting mass paid for that. She does not care whether you hate her, love her, think she's smart, think she's dumb. The Grammys doesn't care if you think they're dumb. If they got you to tune in, they won. They don't give a flying fuck how you tuned in, why you tuned in, who you're going to see. They don't care who's on the award show. So they pay to all will take the outrage plan this year and they weighed out the pros and the cons and they did it and America fell for it. Every news publication fell for it, even though they're doing the same thing. They still fell for it. And I'm going to expose this. I'm going to hire the publicist and I'm going to get them on recording, pitching me the outrage plan to do. And that is what I think they're doing with Jordan Peterson's new book, because there's yep. articles. They're all doing over. it with Jordan Peterson's new book where the publisher is pretending that they're unhappy with the book. If they weren't happy with the book, they wouldn't publish it. OK, they're doing it because they want everybody to go. Oh, yeah. Well, if the publisher's against his book, I'm going to go help Jordan Peterson and, and I'm going to buy that perfect book. Because Jordan Peterson's yeah. fans are the kind of people who they see that there's SJWs crying about the book. So that makes them want to buy three yes. books to prove so them wrong. So what they're doing is they're going, if we make this out like Jordan Peterson is under attack and the publisher hates him and the woke people hate him, which they don't, no one's talking about this. They made this up. All of the Jordan Peterson fans are going to buy three copies to help fight the woke nonsense and keep Jordan Peterson on top. It's an outrage plan. And I'll prove this to you. Thank you so much for joining me. Isn't it crazy that no one else is uh, telling you? And about then that? another light Peterson update. Michaela has invited her dad on the podcast permanently. Yes, uh, Jordan Peterson is now Michaela Peterson's new co-host. You should check out that picture of him she posted. Look at this. A picture of him. Here you go. Light news. And here he is. So Michaela fully in control now and the dad is sitting there and remember he can't think for himself anymore he's taking Michaela's word he's trusting her but it's like a dog you go come here come here they're gonna come <laughs> he's that out of it now so this is the new Peterson and you gotta let go you shouldn't have developed this bond so quickly and this is what I say to fanatics everywhere you're too quick to form bonds with these entertainers that are just out to make money you know when the bachelor comes out the very next day every contestant has a hundred thousand followers and they're beloved for life set for life and they didn't do anything they appeared on the show once they were kicked off 100,000 followers and they're there forever they don't go away you shouldn't be bonding with entertainers this quickly and that's what you did with Jordan Peterson. You refused to... I wish I had this luxury. Nobody bonds with me this easily and stays with me for life. I feel like I have oh, the hardest... Yes, they do. Okay! Don't say that about yourself. Yeah, they do. But don't do it. I don't know what you're searching for. People are saying, is Joe Rogan doing the same thing with the Spotify deal? Maybe. I, we brought that up as a I possibility. Think we talked about that. It could be. He might not Joe even know. Joe doesn't even know, but Spotify. Spotify is could be this. doing because it. Because for two weeks, all the news yeah. was Spotify, Rogan, Spotify, Spotify yeah. Rogan. And then all you remember free from press. that is that Joe Rogan is on Spotify yeah. now. And you hear the word free press and you go, ah, free press, free press. No, no, no. They're saving like $300 million by doing that. So think about this. You pay Joe Rogan $100 million, That creates all the free press that you would have to spend $300 million to buy to announce that Spotify now has pockets. It's brilliant. Everybody's doing this. When it comes to big money, don't uh, they're going to do everything up to the, to the legal limit and even a little a bit above to make or save money. That's how America works. You would do the same thing. Think about the depths you go to save a dollar on your taxes. What do you think a billion dollar company is doing every minute of the day? I mean, they literally have giant factory, millions of workers on a computer just coming up with scheme. Even Logan Paul, team of 20 people day in and day out. How do we get one more view on the video? 
how do we get one more? So when you see these people, if you ever see somebody who has more than a million followers on Instagram, they have a team of people. How do we do in any trick that is legal? They're doing. Anyone who's got that verified check mark is part of the scheme world. You only get that verified check. They don't give it to you as congratulations. You're somebody. They don't. You have to campaign for that blue check mark. So whenever you see a guy with a blue check mark, either him or his manager groveled and campaigned and got on their knees, please give us that check mark. And they went through all the hoops to do it. So that check mark is a badge of patheticism, in my opinion. When you see that blue check, it means that person only cares about image, vanity, and money. It's a sick world we live in these days, isn't it? I'm sorry for being, I hope I'm not bumming people out here today. I hope uh, no. you're not going to hear Mersh say any of this. This is what you're going to hear Mersh say. Yeah, the election, uh, the election. Yeah, cool. It's pretty in intuitive. All right, what do we have next? Oh, light news. I don't want to do this. This is, again, I think, too much. The Russell Schultz. We'll save that for the next show. What about Jocko has COVID? Jocko Willings has COVID? Apparently, breaking news. Thanks I didn't know Rock could get infected. Look at this. I love when someone gets COVID. I hope it kills. You know, can COVID kill somebody we know, finally? Has anyone famous died from COVID? I don't know. How great would it be if Joe Rogan got COVID and died? That would be... I feel like it would almost be worth it. Yeah, it's a horrible thing if somebody dies, but wouldn't it be worth it if Joe Rogan died from COVID after all this? It almost would be worth it. I don't God know if that's... forbid. Let's see what Jocko has to say. We hate Jocko Willings here on the show. He's another false idol that is more concerned with branding, selling, marketing, scheming than motivation. You don't sell motivation, okay? You don't sell energy drinks. You don't sell uh, workout pads and anything you can put your name on unless you're a bad person. Here's Jocko with COVID. The vid! It's Kevin Hart. Not me. Hey, what's up, everybody? Jocko here. I uh, just wanted to give everyone an update. I know I haven't been... Does anyone of- with COVID ever look sick? I mean, I've had light colds in my life, and if you put a video camera on me, I'd have like a thermometer sticking out of my mouth, one of those old school ice packs on my head. <laughs> I'd be like, that's, oh, I'm sick. Remember when you would call into work, it would sound like this. You'd have a light cold. You'd be like, I'm really, I'm so sick. I can't come in. <laughs> this is people with COVID. Hey guys, I have COVID. Sorry, just got back from a jog. I'm feeling great, but I have COVID. I'll be out for three days. See ya. I mean, like, I know people with allergies who are in worse shape than this. What is going on? It really seems weird, right? Hey, everyone, I've, have you ever seen a COVID video of somebody who actually looks sick? They're all so happy. They're like, I have COVID. I'm going to be out for a week. Bye. And you're like, you look better than ever. Hmm. Every Sorry. COVID video. Can you find me a COVID <laughs> video where anyone's even going? <coughs> I don't you think can't. So. Every COVID video is them. Looking great. I Probably mean, when I'm sick, there's no filming me. When I'm sick, I can't talk. This is me sick. Uh, 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 and then I sleep. There's no, hey, everyone, it's me. I'm, I have the flu. No, no, no. So something is up. Doesn't mean COVID's fake, but I think these people lie for some reason. Here. Of, of uh, online updates. Uh, basically because I've been very busy with work, but I do have some good news and some bad news uh, to give right now. I'll start with the bad news. The bad news is that I am positive for the coronavirus. Yes, uh, I'm asymptomatic. Oh. I I feel fine, but... Then you don't have COVID, right? If you're fine, you don't have COVID. We got to stop getting people tested. Seriously, maybe Trump was right. Stop getting tested every day. What are you doing going out? I've never been tested for COVID. I don't let people stick things in my fucking holes. That's the same thing. By the way, you know, we pretend this anus is the only gay opening. If you let a man stick a Q-tip up your nose, you're being fucked by a guy with a dildo. That's the same thing. My nose holes are the same as an ass. They're just smaller. 
if you let anyone stick anything in your body, you're a gay f- beta fuck cuck. So these guys are all getting tested every single minute of the day. That's like getting ass fucked to me. Uh, we were doing an event down in Texas, and as a precautionary measure, everyone got tested before departing, and I didn't have any symptoms or anything, but I went and got tested and came back positive. So I've got what the what my daughters call uh, Miss Rona. So be careful with that. Okay. And like I, I can't s- believe they even allow you around girls. Daughters? What are they? What do they do with you? Huh? Everybody's I, just calling it Miss Rona now. I thought that was like a Jeffrey Star so style guy Don't thing. Fall to anything, say. anything.